Uh, I definitely didn't talk about politics. I was just showing my work. I was talking about resistance. And I just mentioned two, three places named like Manipur, Palestine. And uh, so I am really, really nervous today. And I'll be only sharing something which has a lot of fun and humor. And uh, so I'll not feel unsafe outside the door. Um, when this, this topic came, um, violence, I was not, I was not sure if I'm really going to share something because a lot of my works are bloody fleshy and you know like really look violent and if that works I should exert and show. Um, so I try to look back on my own practice and I think that you know why artists take a space or place up sorry to to ex explain what violence is, how we inherit violence, because violence is like an inherited nature of human being. It is all within us. It is in me, it is with you, and time to time we reflect on violence. So before I talk uh, about others that you are creating violence, I look at myself, that me as an artist, as a violator, I'll go back to a lot of a uh, couple of my projects where I'll just show maybe the show was about something else, but how with the title image, you know, I violated the aesthetic and the emotional sensibilities of my viewers' expectations. How I use language, how I take responsibility as a singular voice, as an I. How, as a title, drawing room show, I make the most explicit images of drawings to greet the guests, because drawing rooms are basically the living room. And then how I, so these are all the reflection of the reverse violence that I, as an artist, experience and I um, respond. A couple of years ago in Kuala Lumpur, I was invited to do a presentation, but I was strictly asked not to show any insensible, ins insensitive images. So I had to violate my own or censure my own presentation by presenting my entire presentation by blocking this, because these are violent. So in 2007, I had a show called Half Full where I had a lot of uh, nudity and yeah, kind of so-called violent images, which can be disturbing. And in 2019, when I again wanted to show, show that work in, in, in Delhi in a public domain, I was again politely asked to be sensitive. So I violated myself again, I defaced my work, and I blackened the same work, and I presented that piece. In my first New York solo show, It's Good to be Queen, the invitation card mentioned that artists will be present. That was the time of that, you know, like that Global South exotic artists are coming and showing internationally. So I, I was absent in my own opening, leaving all my artworks in the, part, in the show. 2017 in Los Angeles, I myself in, invited lots of artists to come for my opening but I did not present a single piece of artwork, but I was present there. In both the projects that playfully deconstructed the modes of consuming art and the artist as a form of violence. I violated market. During the booming, art booming, the art work was priced like multiple times within a couple of months time. I was disturbed emotionally and sentimentally. So I, I launched an online project called Free Me Too, and I started giving people um, an artwork in an exchange of uh, a letter with love. So just to disbalance that my, my um, 
you know, like uh, if I if I suppose if I if I can produce forty works in a year, ten works can go without through this currency money market. So like a romantic way of disbalancing. Since 2017, I am um, uh, uh, using um, semi-legal contracts, like contract paper, as an artist declare, declaration form. And I, I violated again this, uh, um, the market as my new materials in my you know, practice. So I declared all my tangible form of artworks are byproducts. And I also, alongside, I, I create a self declarative contract, that new form of artwork label, and the artwork label as caption. These captions and labels are a new form of material for me, creating a vocabulary that documents the momentum of my impulses, sentiments, and emotions. Byproducts, the tactile manifestation, consumable, tangible entitles, and remnants of my ongoing process are called, are byproducts. The contract beside each artwork is an absurd, provocative, tempting, and utopian proposition to push towards interactivity where roles are reversed and objects are re-objectified. I use caption to acknowledge those ignored, ignored, missing, neglected parts that run below the surface, making them visible, making them visible and audible. So these are my the, the part of my materials. Yeah, sorry. Um, on a recent show, um, subject, a subject uh, was uh, blue, the color blue, I made a set of works on white called Tritanopia, the blindness of blue. A deliberate unseeing and omitting a color component confront the societal illusions as a form of resistance and subversion and become an invisible Kafkaist blue. So there I also create that um, the declaration that why I am doing that and what are the mediums and in that mediums it's not like um, the usual mediums like you know um, ink and watercolor on paper rather I put like whatever is actually missed and uh, invisible. So I try to acknowledge those ideas uh, in, my, in my practice as a medium and so that as, as my work. I violate that cyberspace. Often I see that, you know, like how the cyberspace on that like database, you know, politics is like controlling our things. So I hack my own Wikipedia page, I put misinformation and that goes unnoticed for long. I violate Alexa, Siri, I, these are my different performative uh, works, Alexa, Siri, ChatGPT and also Zoom bombing. So in a, like two years back, there was a absolutely. I think that's one thing that um, yes yeah, struck so me across the as a Zoom bomber, I had uh, online conference visibility questions, and again, that putting that to us as, as historians, as writers, as thinkers. You know, interesting and well in, in timed uh, glitch there <laughs> I could go on and on which are this after is all I, this is how I piloted the speakers start to limit the middle of their presentation start to limit or shape those same people's actions I feel like something crazy is going on here, but I'll just go on. Men make their own history, but they do not make it as they please. Marx goes on in the next... I'm not sure how to continue. <laughs> we don't have to have Zoom poker so, faces on anymore, um, because I think that's the first time... This is how violence happens, and we experience violence in different off. forms language also another violence and especially in a country like india where we are having that 
post-colonial legacy and you know like how language can be um, so I pilot my mother tongue language I speak in fluently I speak non-language gibberish I deconstruct that understanding of uh, any given format of language this non-communicative non-productive form of non-language as a resistance where the expectations are challenged Mom, I am in love with you, Missy. Do what she. I can see. He can only love you as though my love is too sick. They can do. Got a bully in the back of the hut or singing a ring the other. They can tick talking dick to a hot dog at the moon number to me. They can supplicate them, get back to me. When I'm not so near, they can so loud to my under the commodore who was in my colleague. They just click the top of the dream that don't pick up the top of the dream. They go talk to you, talk to you, talk to you, talk to you, but you go all out. They go and scream out, shut. They go talk to you, 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 I address this kind of different myths in my practice and how I can unmit them. I know that um, Ashokji said like we have to be restricted in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I still have 3-4 minutes left. So um, I was invited to do an um, artist presentation um, and that happened in uh, Guggenheim in uh, New York and Asia Society. A lecture performance of an artist presentation staged in a non-language to demonstrate the hierarchy and the hegemony power of institutional and codified norms that control us. Afasia was an institutional critic sliced two times, the pre-made film as a timekeeper based on an in instructional in invitation from an institute for an artist presentation in a mainstream art platform. So I was given a particular time and then I was told that if I don't finish it within the time, there will be an orchestra style music. So I made my own time table, um, timekeeper. There was an institutional guideline that uh, the communication letter actually asked what to do and what not to do. So I have actually, um, as a backdrop, I have made a form and it was a live performance. In heart, go. It comes to the cow fruit toasty. You know, I'm still dark when it does the bully cow fruit. You know, also. Do see you. Now, come stop in the whole of somebody. It doesn't stop. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't see my big grizzly. That is the cow teacher of Tita. In the cow slip. You stop. It's like, wow, do you see? You cow. You wow.
，伊拉后生逃避，好处理。伊拿到手，我讲，我想拿手，阿到那边上那边。I had to stay up because I was running out of the time, so I stayed up myself. से जुड़े हुए हमारे मित्र बैठे हैं जो इन कला माध्यमों में सृजन करते हैं मैं उनमें से नहीं हूं लेकिन भाषा से रिश्ता है और ये सब कुछ जो होता है ये भाषा में होता है और मैं अक्सर सोचता हूं कि जब हम हिंसा की बात करते हैं तो वो भाषा के साथ क्या करती है और हिंसा दरअसल हमारे सामने आती ही किस शक्ल में है अशोक जी ने शुरू में हिंसा के कई प्रकारों की बात की कई शक्लों की बात की एक हिंसा जो चुपचाप घटती रहती है जिसमें खून नहीं बहता है लेकिन जिससे हम जख्मी होते रहते हैं जाति तौर पर जख्मी होते हैं लेकिन एक हिंसा वह है जिसमें हम एक शख्स हैं इससे ज्यादा हम एक पहचान है जिसको रोहित वैमुला ने कहा था कि मेरा जन्म ही एक हादसा है क्योंकि मुझे एक पहचान में घटा दिया गया है और मैं उससे कभी खुद को आजाद नहीं कर सकता मैं चाहूं तो भी खुद को आजाद नहीं कर सकता और हिंदुस्तान में हम ये जानते हैं कि यह जो मुसलसल चलने वाली हिंसा है जो सदियों से चलती आ रही है और जो एक तरह से हमारे खून में या नसों में बस गई है वह जाति की हिंसा है जिससे निजात पाना बहुत मुश्किल है आपके पास क्या बहुत पैसा हो जाएगा अहदा आ जाएगा और आप उस हिंसा से मुक्त हो जाएंगे आजाद हो जाएंगे कब वह हिंसा आपके सामने आके खड़ी हो जाएगी जो जाति की हिंसा है और आप उसका मुकाबला नहीं कर पाएंगे ये एक बात है यानी हिंसा जब जो आपकी याद में बसी होती है आपकी स्मृति में बसी होती है आपकी पूरी याद को गढ़ती है एक वह हिंसा है और यह हिंसा हिंदुस्तान में अगर जाति के शक्ल में आती है तो हिंदुस्तान में एक दूसरी शक्ल में भी आती है यानी अगर आप यहाँ के किसी मुसलमान से बात करें और उससे पूछें कि तुम हिंसा को कैसे पहचानते हो उससे भी जिसने कभी लिंचिंग नहीं बर्दाश्त लिंचिंग का सामने नहीं किया लेकिन वह हिंसा को जानता है क्योंकि यह जानती है क्योंकि वह मुसलमान है और उसको पता है कि मुसलमान होने के चलते वह हिंसा के वातावरण में रहने को बाध्य है मजबूर है और उसको अपनी अपने पूरे अस्तित्व को उस हिंसा के मुकाबले परिभाषित करना है बचाए रखना और यह उस पर जिम्मेदारी है 
जो दूसरा लफ्स हिंसा के साथ इस्तेमाल किया जाता है अक्सर वह है जिसका हिंदी प्रतिरूप उस तरह का मुझे नहीं मिला जो इल्जाम लगाया जाता है हिंसा के शिकार लोगों पर कि आप दरअसल हमेशा विक्टिमहुड में रहते हैं आप विक्टिमहुड में रहते हैं आप शिकायती हो गए हैं और इससे अगल बगल के लोगों को बहुत परेशानी होती है क्योंकि उनकी जिंदगी में खलल पड़ता है एक शिकायत हो रही है एक विक्टिम उनके सामने खड़ा है जैसे वह उन पर आरोप लगा रहा है इल्जाम लगा रहा है तो उसका पूरा पूरा वजूद ही एक तरह का इल्जाम हो जाता है जो खुद अपमान की बात है उसके लिए भी और दूसरे लिए के लिए भी कि वह क्यों चैन से नहीं जीने दे रहा है किसी और को आ, क्योंकि वह अपना विक्टिम हुड लेकर खड़ा है और यह इल्जाम अगर हिंदुस्तान में मुसलमानों पर लगाया जाता है तो आज जब हम अभी यहां खड़े हैं तो हमें नहीं पता कि यहां से हजारों मील दूर गाजा में और अब गाजा पूरी तरह से जमी दोस्त कर दिया गया है पूरी तरह से नस्तानाबूद कर दिया गया है आज सुबह उसकी तस्वीरें जब मैं देख रहा था तो उसमें लिखा है कि अब गाजा में कोई लौट नहीं सकता उसे इस तरह का बना दिया गया है और उसी समय मैं इंटरव्यू पढ़ रहा था इसराइल के मंत्रियों के इंटरव्यू और सिर्फ इसराइल के मंत्री का इंटरव्यू नहीं अमेरिका की एक यूनिवर्सिटी की डीन का इंटरव्यू मैं पढ़ रहा था जिन्होंने कहा कि गाजा को एक नेशनल पार्क में तब्दील कर देना चाहिए नेशनल पार्क या फुटबॉल का मैदान या पार्किंग लॉट ये तीन शब्द हैं जिनसे हिंसा की कोई बू नहीं आती है और गाजा को उसमें तब्दील करना है और मैंने एक तस्वीर देखी आई की एक महिला आ, महिला फौजी की जो समंदर के तट पे खड़ी है और वो कह रही है कि यह वो नजारा है जो हम चाहते हैं और दूसरी बात ये कही जा रही है कि दरअसल पश्चिमी तट के लोगों को समंदर का नजारा ठीक से दिखलाई पड़े इसलिए गाजा को समतल करना बहुत जरूरी है तो एक सुंदर नजारा है और मुझे वो तस्वीर जिसमें आई की वह फौजी खड़ी है सामने समंदर है और वो मुड़कर कैमरे को देख रही है मुझे खुद एक कलाकृति जैसी लगी ये कलाकृति है इसमें हिंसा छपी हुई है इसमें खूबसूरती है वह जो कत्ल कर रहा है वह खूबसूरती के लिए कत्ल कर रहा है और उसके रास्ते में बहुत सारे लोग हैं जिनको खत्म कर दिया जाना चाहिए क्योंकि वो खूबसूरती के रास्ते में आड़े आ रहे हैं ज्यादा सभ्य लोगों के खूबसूरती की चाहत के रास्ते में आड़े आ रहे हैं और ये लोग जो मारे जा रहे हैं कत्ल हो रहे हैं ये कौन लोग हैं इसराइल के मंत्री ने कहा कि दे नॉट ह्यूमंस दे आर ह्यूमन एनिमल्स और बहुत लोगों को ऐसा लगा कि ये तो एक नई बात है जो इसराइल के मंत्री ने कही और मैं बहुत फिर मैं पलटने लगा महमूद दरवेश को मेमोरियन फॉरगेटफुलनेस और मैं देख मैंने देखा कि महमूद दरवेश ने 20 साल पहले लिखा है कि वी आर कॉल्ड ह्यूमन एनिमल्स 20 साल पहले आपका पड़ोसी आपको ह्यूमन एनिमल कहता है और उस वजह से आप खत्म किए जाने लायक हैं इस एहसास के साथ आपको जिंदा रहना है और जिंदा रहने की जिद करनी है कि मुझे जिंदा रहना है यह चुनौती और इसीलिए मैं जब हिंसा और कला के रिश्ते पर सोच रहा था तो मुझे लगा कि बर्तोल ब्रेस्ट की तरह शायद हमें हर समय हिंसा के उस रूप की शिनाख्त करनी होती है जो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण रूप है क्योंकि एक प्रलोभन ये हो सकता है कि लालच हो सकता है कि हम कहें कि हिंसा तो सर्वव्याप्त है हिंसा तो हमारे जीवन में है घर में हिंसा होती है हमारे आपसी हमारे दफ्तर में हिंसा होती है और इस तरह जो हिंसा जिस जिस हिंसा पर बात करना और जिससे जूझना इस वक्त का सबसे अहम काम है हम एक तरह से उसको कम तक कर देते हैं क्योंकि हम बहुत सारी हिंसाओं को एक धरातल पर लाकर रख देते हैं और इसलिए हिंसा के सामने जब इस हिंसा के सामने जिसे मैं रेडिकल वायलेंस कहूंगा 
रेडिकल वायलेंस जो एक पूरे वजूद को खत्म कर देना चाहती है जो रेडिकल वायलेंस नाजी वायलेंस थी जिसके बारे में अशोक जी ने कहा ऑश्वेट्स और बहुत सारे कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कैंप्स और गैस चैम्बर्स खत्म नहीं कर पाए लेकिन उस रेडिकल वायलेंस को लोगों ने देखा और थियोडोर अडोनो ने बाद में कहा कि यह एक तरह से हमारा फर्ज है तालीम का फर्ज है और कला का फर्ज है और उसका पहला नारा होना चाहिए ऑश्वेट्स फिर कभी नहीं लेकिन हमने ये देखा कि वह नारा अब कितने भयानक तरीके से बदल गया है जिसमें यह कहा जा रहा है उन लोगों के द्वारा जो ऑश्वेत से बचे हुए लोगों के वंशज हैं उनके द्वारा कहा जा रहा है हम जो कत्लेआम कर रहे हैं अगर तुम उसके खिलाफ बोलते हो इसका मतलब तुम नाजी हो अगर तुम फिलिस्तीनियों की तरफ से बोलते हो इसका मतलब तुम नाजी हो इसका मतलब तुम ऑश्वित चाहते हो और जब यह कहा गया कि सात अक्टूबर को जो गाजा के पास के बुद्ध में हुआ था वो हॉलोकास्ट के बाद का सबसे बड़ा हमला था तो हॉलोकास्ट को ही एक तरह से निरर्थक बना दिया गया क्योंकि हम जानते हैं कि हॉलोकास्ट क्या था और हॉलोकास्ट दरअसल अब किसके साथ हो रहा है और हॉलोकास्ट क्यों नहीं होना चाहिए और वो मनोवैज्ञानिक गैबोर माते ने ठीक ही कहा कि नेवर अगेन वॉज नेवर ए ट्राइबल स्लोगन इट वॉज नॉट ए ट्राइबल स्लोगन it was not meant to be never again for jews never again auschwitz never again ka matlab hai ki auschwitz saab palestiniyon ke saath bhi nahi kar sakte aur jews bhi nahi kar sakte aur zionists bhi nahi kar sakte to palestiniyon ke samne jo chunauti hai wo chunauti hai ki aap hinsa is hinsa ke aage khud khade kaise reh sakte hain aur महमूद दरवेश की ही एक कविता मुझे बहुत पहले की याद आई कि जो सबसे बड़ा काम है और सबसे अहम काम है वह है टू बी होना सिर्फ होना रह कर साबित करना कि हम हैं और इधर सात दिन पहले मैंने एक फिलिस्तीनी नौजवान लड़की की एक पोस्ट पढ़ी और आजकल ट्विटर मुझे एक बहुत बड़ा आर्ट साइट मालूम पड़ता है जिसमें लोग और उस औरत ने लिखा कि मैं गर्भवती हूं मुझे छह महीने का गर्भ है और मैं एक फिलिस्तीनियों को जन्म देने जा रही हूं यह एक कविता का वाक्य है फिलिस्तीनियों को जन्म देने जा रही हूं जब यह कहा जा रहा है कि हर एक फिलिस्तीनियों को खत्म कर देना चाहिए उस वक्त एक औरत कह रही है मैं एक फिलिस्तीनी को जन्म देने जा रही और यह कविता का वाक्य है इससे ज्यादा अर्जेंट इससे ज्यादा जरूरी और कोई दूसरा वाक्य हो नहीं सकता लेकिन एक दूसरी दिक्कत यह है जो कलाकारों के साथ है और हम लोग जो आलोचना का काम करते हैं आ, आ, वे उस परेशानी को कलाकारों के समझते हैं जब उनसे मांग की जाती है कि तु, तुम इस हिंसा के लिए भाषा तैयार करो और कई बार कलाकार यह कहता है कि इस हिंसा के आगे दरअसल निस्तब्धता ही एक भाषा है क्योंकि यह धोखा होगा यह कहना कि मेरे पास भाषा है इस हिंसा को बताने के लिए तो मुझे शायद अपना कैनवास खाली करना चाहिए शायद एक कवि को एक खामोशी रखनी चाहिए और उसे कहना चाहिए कि इस वक्त कुछ नहीं कहना ही मेरा कहना है तो आप भाषा की इस अशक्तता को कभी व्यक्त कर सकते हैं कि नहीं और ऐसा करना कोई अपनी कायरता दिखलाना नहीं है बल्कि यह बतलाना है कि यह है भाषा इस हिंसा के सामने कई बार बिल्कुल लाचार होती है और उसको कबूल करना चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी मांग यह होती है कवि के कवि से वह मांग की जाती है कलाकार से मांग की जाती है कि तुम इस हिंसा के बारे में बात करो और तुम हमारे बारे में बात करो और उसे विषय दिया जाता है और उसको उस पर लानत भेजी जाती है कि तुम इस पर बात नहीं कर रहे हो और इस विषय वस्तु पर बात नहीं कर रहे हो इस थीम पर नहीं लिख रहे हो इस थीम पर पेंट नहीं कर रहे हो और वह कलाकार कहता है कि नहीं माफ करो 
मैं सिर्फ इसमें शेष नहीं होना चाहता भाषा कहीं बड़ी है और चुनौती कवि की कलाकार की मनुष्य की यह है कि वह इस हिंसा के सामने जो कि दरअसल आपको पूरी तरह से अस्थिर बल्कि टुकड़े टुकड़े और चिथड़े चिथड़े कर देना चाहती है आप अपने रूप को अपने फॉर्म को बचा कर रख सकें एक जीवट के साथ कि वो फॉर्म है और मैंने उसको खत्म नहीं होने दिया है मैं मेमोरी और फॉर फॉरगेटफुलनेस की कुछ पंक्तियां पढ़ूंगा और एक कविता और अपनी बात खत्म कर दूंगा जिसमें महमूद दरवेश ये कहते हैं कि फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम और देखिए ये महमूद दरवेश फिर 20 साल या 30 साल पहले लिखे हैं फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन आवर हिस्ट्री आवर एब्सेंस इज कंडीशनल अपॉन आवर टोटल प्रेजेंस Palestinians has have to be totally visible to be made invisible. This the bombs are doing. Present to make oneself absent. और उसके बाद वो कहते हैं कि I want to find a language that transforms language itself into steel for the spirit. A language to use against these sparkling silver insects. These Jets. This type of the work is carried in title, preposition, suggestions of an exchange, as in blow for blow, as if the author were saying, "You give me bombs, I give you a text. You give me forgetfulness, I give you memory. You give me history." I give you writing. लेकिन जैसा मैंने कहा कि इसके बाद जो दूसरी उसकी जंग होती है वो अपने लोगों से होती है अपने लोग जो उससे कहते हैं कि यह है मेरे बारे में लिखो ऐसे लिखो ऐसे पेंट करो और अगर नहीं कर रहे हो तो तुम गद्दार हो और महमूद दरवेश ने उनके लिए एक कविता लिखी जिस पर मैं अपनी बात खत्म कर रहा हूं वो है एसेसिनेशन द क्रिटिक्स किल मी समाइम्स दे वॉन्ट ए पर्टिकुलर पोएम a particular metaphor and if i stray up a side road they say he has betrayed the road and if i find eloquence in grass they say he has abandoned the state fastness of the home oak they ask where is the blood of the homeland in its petals and if i write it is the butterfly my youngest sister at the garden door they stir the meaning with a soap spoon and if i whisper a mother is a mother when she loses her child she withers and dries like a stick they say she trills with joy and dances as at his funeral for his funeral is his wedding and if i look up at the sky to see the unseen they say poetry has strayed far from its objectives the critics kill me sometimes and i escape from their reading and thank them for their misunderstanding then search for my new poem thank you Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this uh, 88th edition and uh, what is sure to be a series with at least 88 more uh, and uh, i think the topic is um, one which is so evident and obvious ke is pe jitna kam kaha jaye utna theek hai 
تو میں کم کہنے کی کوشش میں زیادہ غلو نہیں کروں گا آئی تھنک دیٹ سم آف دا نوشنس آف دا سیلف اینڈ لائف وچ وی ہیو امبائب نیڈ ٹو بی اپینٹیڈ وائل وی آر تھنکنگ اباؤٹ آرٹ اینڈ وائلنس ناؤ ایز سم بڈی ہو از اے پریکٹیشنر آف سوفیزم اینڈ سوفی میوزک سیلف انائلیشن از اے ویری اسٹرانگ کانسیپٹ اینڈ سوفیزم یو نو سو دا بیٹل فیلڈ ود ان از کنسیڈر ٹو بی فار مور ریلیونٹ امپارٹنٹ اینڈ وائٹل دین دا بیٹل فیلڈ ود آؤٹ بیکاز دا بیٹل فیلڈ آؤٹ سائڈ دے کیپ چینجنگ اینڈ most of the issues upon which they are staged also go away every century, every two centuries. But what really stays is the vibratory, how do we say, imprint, the vibratory imprint of what is left behind by acts of self-evolution, of self Enlightenment of self-annihilation. And so, I will keep my own mind in that direction. And that when you have said a very good thing, which resonates a lot with what Picasso said, that, you know, art is a lie which helps us see the truth. So, if you have said that the truth is مولوی یا کوئی شیخ کہتا تو لوگ کہتے تو ہمیں اس کی بات سمجھ نہیں آ رہی لیکن پکاسو کا یہ کہنا بہت ضروری تھا جس طریقے سے افلاطون کا یہ کہنا بہت ضروری تھا کہ کلاکار سماج کا آئینہ ہے اور حکومت کے عدل و انصاف کا مزاج بھی ہے دا آرٹسٹ از ان مر وچ ریفلیکٹس دی جسٹس آف دا اسٹیٹ اینڈ دا اسٹیٹ آف دا سوسائٹی So I think that um, those are the larger questions which we should look at. I think people today have become very entitled to the idea of the sacrosanct self. But is there a concept of self really when we speak about violence? Because if you're looking at esoteric violence, so that's a totally different thing. Um, esoteric violence can have huge uh, sort of, uh, 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 you know, impacts on the esoteric self. But then if we look at exoteric violence, we are forced to ask the question that is it, just like the Buddhists claim, nothing more than a projection of the inner self. Now, someone told me that we have changed the name of Aurangzeb Road, 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 جس نے ہندوستان کو ایک بہت بڑا ایسا ہتھیار دیا جو ہتھیار اگر کہیں چل جاوے تو اس کے بعد کئی صدیوں تک وہاں سبزہ بھی نہ ہوگے اور تو یہ ایک بہت اچھی چیز تھی تو میں نے کہا کہ پھر اگر آپ اس یہ آپ کا معیار ہے تو ہاؤ اباؤٹ چینجنگ دا نیم آف اشوکا روڈ بیکاز اشوکا نے تو کلنگ میں دس لاکھ لوگوں کو مارا تھا اپیرنٹلی ایز ہسٹری ٹیلز اس So, so I think that um, that kind of reading of history in itself is violence. And uh, because then if you choose to live a lie, right, if you choose to be confronted with the truth and live a lie, then you're doing this violence on yourself. And then after that, you will project it outwards. So now three, four things have also happened. The concept of family as we know it is gone now. So there is no balance in our lives in, a, in that sense anymore. Whatever balance or disbalance we have to create for ourselves. So we are pretty much in this country, we are in our own, we are not God. And wherever it goes, the implications depend on our actions. On one side, this is a very big shagoo that the military industrial complex has put in our minds. that we are only responsible for ourselves. And then so the self becomes so large that there is no space in it for thinking of anything outside the self. 
So um, I do remember uh, a very nice analogy which uh, J.K. Rowling gives in her novel where she says ke, uh, where uh, she, uh, she uh, writes that um, Harry Potter ke ustad hain, wo unse hain, at the end of his journey that uh, do you want to carry on further or do you want to go back to where you came from? So he says, if I carry on, will it still be real? Because it seems like it's only happening inside my head. So he says, why is what's happening inside your head not real? Because everything that is happening outside <laughs> is directly related to and a, pro and a cause, of, a cause of what is happening inside. So the struggle within is very much linked to the struggle without. And the Sufis understand this very well. And hence they have devised what is known as inner engineering. Not the inner engineering package courses we are getting today, but I'm talking about something far more organic, something far more uh, impactful. So, jo, ab jo Sufi, uh, the Sufi hai, uski ravish ye hai, ke hum violence ki baat karte hain, to Sufi kehta hai ke maut se pehle mar jana. Maut se pehle mar jana. Maut hun kabal anta maut hun. So, to die before you die. Now, who is dying here? The only thing which is dying is, if that is possible, is your ego, you know. And then as Allama Iqbal says, that khudi mein dhubne wale ubar bhi aate hain. So, agar hum un dono cheezo ko jod ke dekhe, to kisi bhi kisam ki kala ko create karna, tajweez karna, usse jodna, usse engage karna, ye puri zindagi ka ek kaam hai. Aur isko weekends pe nahi liya ja sakta. इसमें जैसा अमीर खुसरो कहते हैं कि डूब के जाना है जो डूबा सो पार तो आपकी जो अपनी डीपली हेल्ड आइडियाज हैं आपके प्रिंसिपल्स हैं आपकी सोच और फिक्र है आपकी तालीम और तरबियत है अगर आप उसमें डूब के नहीं जा रहे हैं और आप दूसरों को बता रहे हैं कि आप डूब जाओ तो आप कलाकार नहीं हैं आप लोगों को गुमराह की गुमराही की तरफ भेज रहे हैं एंड अ वेरी बिग एग्जांपल ऑफ दैट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ वायलेंस द अमाउंट ऑफ um, lust and the amount of material love for the material world that has been normalized in everything that is around us. And uh, people talked about, um, you know, Kushti um, Hamgani, people talked about the Holocaust. Um, and uh, the, the Holocaust has been for the last century seen as the mother of all tragedies, disasters, how human beings should utterly not behave. And every world convention law has been created uh, uh, in accordance with that belief that this was some noble war. And of course, there are many other things that I don't want to go because we don't want to reduce the memory of the Holocaust also. But um, how is it that the people who were in the world were in the world? तो ये अपने आप में अगर हम नहीं के जी सबसे ज्यादा ऐसी कम्युनिटी और और भी कम्युनिटीज एक दुनिया जिसने इतनी ज्यादा अदबियत इतनी ज्यादा कला इतने तरह तरह का इतने तरह तरह के माध्यम उसको फैलाने के लिए यू नो पिछले 100 साल में जो प्रोड्यूस हुए हैं कभी नहीं हुए कहीं प्रोड्यूस राइट इन द लास्ट 100 इयर्स द रीच द शेयर रीच of media, multimedia, art, writing, history, past, present, future um, um, sort of being uh, spilled in front of our eyes every day from television, from the internet, from every way. It has never been higher. I mean, if I want, I can, in three minutes, I can go to uh, archives.org and get a copy of a source text which I'm looking for and which is not in print anymore. To such कभी भी इतना ज़्यादा इतने तरी तरी के से हमारे सामने नहीं था फिर भी हम उसको हम अपनी सारी उन्हीं फितरतों को दोहरा रहे हैं तो और आ, मुझे तो नहीं honestly लगता कि ये aberration है unfortunately ये हमारी फितरत ही है अगर ये नहीं करते तो कोई और करता sadly so I think that इस दौर में artist का role और भी ज़्यादा important हो जाता है हम लोग जब कोई concert करते हैं या कहीं गाते हैं, तो हमारा मन हज ये नहीं होता कि हमें सामने वाले को इम्प्रेस करना है मुतासिर करना है या एंटरटेन करना है। We want to leave behind the only workable solution for violence in 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 what is in our estimation and opinion. Maybe we are totally wrong. Also, please feel free to destroy my argument also as soon as I have made it. 
is that when you remind people of the shared syncretic and intangible organic ways in which they have connected uh, and hence evolved the culture then and only then can you bring them to an inner opening once you remind people that they are they are arriving from a certain place and going to a certain place and on that journey um, if if they choose to live their lives in a way where they are sharing where they are learning and where they are making something which will which will say have a lasting impact then life is a life worth living and uh, jaise mujhe kabir das ji ki ek kahani yaad aayi and in fact uh, ek aur uh, shayar the i think my mom was doing some research on this a guy by the pen name urfi who was in akbar's court and um, uh, so uh, interestingly both both kabir and urfi arrive at the same conclusion that if you live your life make make your death so or rather i would turn it around i'd say make your life so that when you have died uh, the people of all the communities are wrangling over your dead body saying nahi nahi ye to hamara tha nahi nahi ye to hamari thi nahi nahi ye to hamare the and that is a indicator of the success of your life so i think hamare yahan at least uh, ye ek bahut workable solution raha hai violence ko counter karne ka ke jab aap ek teesri jagah logon ko baithne ka nyota dete hain जब आप उनको ऐसी बातें याद दिलाते हैं जो एक रूहानी लेवल पे एक कलबी एक दिल के लेवल पे उनको इम्पैक्ट करती हैं ना कि सिर्फ एक सरसरी एक इंटेलेक्ट के लेवल पे तो वो इम्पैक्ट जो है वो कई जनरेशंस तक रह सकता है और अगर आप और अगर आप उनको सिर्फ एक ऊपरी ऊपरी तरीके से जो है इम्पैक्ट करते हैं रायना जी ने बात करी थी टेररिज्म की तो ये बहुत एक जरूरी चीज है कि कोई भी मजहब कई तरीके से अपने आप को मैनिफेस्ट कर सकता है एक इंपीरियल और पॉलिटिकल गेन के लिए और दूसरा इनर गेन के लिए इनर लर्निंग्स के लिए तो रास्ता इनवर्ड ही है आउटवर्ड नहीं है और बहुत सारे एग्जाम्पल्स मैं मैं आपको दे सकता हूँ कि किस तरीके से जुनेद बगदादी जो एक बहुत बड़े सूफी थे उन्होंने एक नशिस्त बुलाई जिसके अंदर सारे ऑल द ऑल द क्लरिक्स और ऑल द उलमाज और द टाइम वर डिस्कसिंग वेरियस सेमेंटिक्स एंड रिलीजियस इश्यूज एंड सो वन ऑफ देम सडनली गॉड अप एंड स्टार्टेड वर्लिंग ही स्टार्टेड टू डांस एंड वर्ल एंड ही स्टार्टेड टू सिंग एंड सो सडनली एवरीबडी एल्स ऑल्सो फॉलो सूट एंड देन द होल महफिल नशिस्त टर्न इन टू अ महफिल एंड अ महफिल समा and then at the end junaid bagdadi was asked about this action and he said surely that melody which takes you which reminds you of your own inner origins is surely beautiful and that which incites you towards something negative is surely very wrong yesterday i was watching the soldiers from the idf you know they were creating these wonderful songs uh, about how they want to destroy Uh, all the amalek you know what they call the amalek and then um, uh, um and here are these people who are so insecure uh, that they have everything yet they don't want to even allow the people of gaza a dignity of life and then um, i saw another uh, gazan very famous gazan musician saying today after many days we found a car battery that we could use and we decided to hook it up to a speaker and make some music you know and uh, here we are going to sing some traditional songs of our people so people who are under the worst oppression still don't have any hate in their hearts right and people who have the best of technology and and the best of life they have so much hatred and i think that is the lesson also for us to learn from here to main to aap sab se yahi keh ke apni baat ko khatam karunga ke sangeet aur khaas taur se sufi bhakti sangeet ek bahut powerful zariya hai हमको याद दिलाने का कि क्यों हम एक साथ यहाँ जी सकते हैं और एक दूसरे की खुशियों में और मोहब्बत में शरीक हो सकते हैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया
जी 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 संजीव एज माय पर्सनल इज पॉलिटिकल एंड आई हैव कम दिल्ली इन 1990 एंड आज मुझे आई लाइक दैट आई एम नॉट माइनॉरिटी सो दैट टाइम मुझे मैं माइनॉरिटी से आया एंड वेन आई रीच दिल्ली आई स्टिल हेल्प माई सेल माइनॉरिटी यू कुड नॉट ट्रांसफर द आइडियाज यू कुड नॉट एक्सप्रेस एनी थिंग विच टूडे वी कैन एक्सप्रेस वी कैन एक्सप्रेस एट लीस्ट आई फील पार्ट ऑफ दिस रूम एट लीस्ट आई एम नॉट माइनॉरिटी हेयर आई डोंट नो आउट साइड सो सो इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू नेगोशिएट विद अ कमिंग टू बिग प्लेस एंड आई हैव कम फ्रॉम पोलिटिकल ऑफ हेवल एज as a migrant refugee from kashmir in 1990 you don't know how to handle yourself within this dogma where you cannot talk this was in 1990 i did this my first painting terrorist on floating land it was so difficult to convince even the artists even the senior artists many in gari i was working in gari studios and we are first i didn't get the space but i worked outside the community studio and the door later i found a place when manjeet and harpana and gogi pillu was working in that community studio this was my first work so everybody will come and say you will die what, what, you were committing suicide and so but it was difficult to transfer what i have come from so that's how it started in its 1990 likewise then i landed in a guest house baulpur house where every artist used to land and this was the only space where you could think about violence and how to deal with it so i did this work and it was chaotic ba- baulpur house where you will get 5 rupees ki khat and 5 din ke liye then 6 7 days you have to move in the parks and go back to take admission to your spend 30 years 33 months there four five months right so i used to paint what happened in kashmir that time these pandits who were uh, registering themselves as refugees who were educated people so i would paint all that sort of things that time whether laskol who was a friend was killed so i did this and or amola now who was this so these kind of images i kept doing these for many years so uh likewise i painted of that poem it could be so that was ever, but there was not much discouragement till mr alkazi gave me first show in 92 so that was my first show and uh, i was these works because it was more therapeutic to me that time and then i moved to some installation arts and did certain couple of things and finally this art on moves which was vivan's curation where i showed the victim and victimizer now in chicago <laughs> then after 12 years i chose to go back and look for my place which i knew was not there and uh, it was uh, i was emotional about this is the lane at the end of the lane we would live so would mk so so i first thought i will scribble and make uh, some paintings out of it but that, that would mean my interpretation so i took a photograph of my that burnt house which is not i think i missed that house and it remained with me for some time and then i went back with a bigger camera because these houses are big and the lanes are small start documenting the houses i knew around this is professor madan's house and many of these houses which has associated we know where we lived this particular architecture so i start documenting as many i could in shrinagar then moved to other places too so it was very interesting that you could not easily go to these places that time it was a peak militancy it was 98 onwards so it is a ongoing archival which still is on so this was muzaffar who would accompany me those to downtown and locate the houses this uh, abandoned houses 
but he will be more argumental and he will be more, you know, argue on Islam with the people. Finally, under what circumstances he got killed. So, well, I owe him a lot and so I always uh, pay homage to him when I show this body of work. So that's how Kashmir is. You could not have freedom of expression. I'm very amused today because in the 90s I was thinking why don't people understand how how it how it happens and how it grows and how it flourishes, this whole violence of majority minoritism. <laughs> so I was always intrigued and I'm like what is happening today is related. When we had lockdowns here, we got this, we had lockdowns all the time, all 30 years we have been facing lockdowns. And we know how it is, how, and people have been surviving through it, and nobody gives ear to it. So these houses were very important to me. We, we pleaded the government, we were negotiating with people that we, if we could save some houses to, as a part of civilization, as a part of vernacular architecture, as a part of what it was, but finally, the, in, which is a Herculeous task there too with the government there. But then the floods have spread. Floods have, many houses got, uh, have fallen and difficult because it's a mud mortar and that kind of uh, architecture. So then I built this house installation in 2015, a fallen house, just symbolic to preserve, how can we preserve the heritage of the house. So there was a huge flood. So I built this fallen house and shown in India Art Fair 2015. And then after the floods were over, I went there, I made a little film video for 10 minutes film, which I showed within the house about the concern and the loss and loss of heritage. But my whole concern was homelessness of these heritage houses. And within that, when, as I said, the floods were huge, so there was no communication. So you could not contact anyone I was here. In fact, we were supposed to go, we cancelled, but this flood happened. So I would paint little faces of those whom I remember, whom I was associated with. There was a shopkeeper, a boatman. So I would paint these small portraits within that time, which uh, during, till the communication got restored. So I painted. All those I remember, professors, old women, whomsoever, made hundreds of portraits till, till it got restored, I could go there. After many, after many years, I felt studio practice was not enough. I got engaged with the people. I got engaged with the community. So I chose to go, that too, I started going for this house project, but then by then I got associated back. Now as outsider, insider to Kashmir. So I start going and I thought we have to do something with communities. So we initiated one project which was, <coughs> we found this place, 100 year old Fletcher's where once silk used to be woven and exported. So in these Fletcher's we developed a project that I will bring all the artists who have left Kashmir and who are born in Kashmir to connect them, or who are affected with it. So we united all the artists who were out of Kashmir. So it was, it was a terrible task to convince people who, have, who had some kind of hurt, how they have left, but finally many of them got convinced. It was Mujtaba, a young artist, so he was part of curatorial of this project, and uh, we, got almost 60 artists on the board and uh, and we were building this show within this abundant place because which later was to be for Rishinagar Binale. So this was the place we had chosen. It was Governor Vora also had, after the show, declared it this will be the place for the cultural center, which doesn't happen because Kashmir, Kashmir is Kashmir. Because what happened on this day, I was build, I was putting this boat, this installation, the same time it was, I remember it was evening 7, M.K. Rena called from Kerala that Shujat Bukhari was killed, who was our common journalist friend. 
and who had to meet me that evening and his last article was on this show. So, who was just 15 minutes away. He was killed along with security. He was editor of the magazine and MK called me. So, we don't know what to do. Mr. and me sat down. Don't know now the artist will come or not. We don't know. So, we couldn't talk to each other. We went to our places. We don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. But finally, artists have arrived. So all, all the artists from arrived, so show was on. And there was emotionality because they were meeting after decades to each other, artists, professors, Bush and Colonel John, and many more. So there was kind of commotion. We built the show. Show was just not what their individual practices are, but to be, to come as Mr. Chandar Salim, his performance, so we, we did what we could do that time. But it was just one day, because <coughs> there was so much of security issue and other things. But the show we put and it did, and, and every artist who were not wanting to come to Kashmir now wanted to stay here. So it, it was like, okay, okay, but the governor got changed next day after Shujat Bukhari, so everything gone back to zero, as it happens in Kashmir. We keep building many things, but it collapses after some event. So that's how it is Kashmir. So I uh, was invited to this Kochi Mazaris project. I made the Sufi shrine. Basically, nobody talks because it is radical versus Sufism in Kashmir, but journalists will talk about more polarized politics of many things. But so I made the Sufi shrine. So the and <coughs> in Matanchali Urup space, I got these two young artists from Kashmir to do the performance of surveillance frisking as what they were used to. They are used to in Kashmir and to transfer the idea of what frisking means. So it was a 12 hours performance before we enter into this space. So no one is allowed without going through this process. One who is not willing will not be allowed. There was some kind of frisk, some tussles. Like when DG didn't want to, he said, what nonsense? I said, that is nonsense. So, <laughs> so then you would enter the space. And then I also got voices of other artists, writers, photographers who were born in conflict, who are affected with it, and their works I put, it was like a parikrama around the shrine. So the voices were around. Like Mahmoud Ahmed's work, Shaukar Nanda's photographs, beautiful photographs of these were my abandoned houses. The nearest Bakshi's premonitions book he wrote once he visited Kashmir. Likewise, there was Sana Ishad Mat, which is a photograph, a beautiful video of uh, this grave digger who was not a traditionally grave digger, but he has to become grave digger because so many were getting killed, and he read a lovely story and lovely video of him. And then. I showed Gargi's work here, Tikkus, and Indra Salim's images, his performance images. Then Ehtisham's, Altaf Kadri's, whosoever were born affected with the conflict. And this was the shrine that you enter into the shrine. These were my works, these caskets, these little coffins of children's. And that was how it is. And there were bones painted uh, with a local paper mache craft, which is which you see mostly in souvenirs and because I wanted to identify where it comes from, that's how it was. 
and I continued with paper mache and that's another is a Shia community who deals with this paper mache craft for these small boxes and vases and seminars. I wanted to bring they have their own so while meeting them you learn many things of their pains, anguish, how they have gone through. In Kashmir, whosoever has gone out or in, everyone has suffered some way or the other. You collect these tricks and bits. This was then I made this Zuljana. Zuljana is a Shia community has this because Hassan Hussain's horse, which is still wandering, so I made this work with this. Then I read this Aga Shahid Ali's poem, Country Without Post Office. I made this post up in the letter because he wrote, he visited Kashmir in let, letter box were filled with letters, there were no takers. So this work was built on this. And then I did this project on the poets, six poets from 14th century Laldet to Aga Shahid Ali, Manto, Mahjur, more. And which has been, uh, it was, which has been written over the years and sung by various poets and which goes from generation to generation and which you could hear in different voices and narrations. Then it was 2010, I, uh, where I was in Kashmir and as Raina said, we keep getting caught up between uh, security and stone pelting chaos. So that I, I, there was a day when around uh, more than 100 people got killed, 100 boys got killed. And I was caught between in your shiras, I was caught between the two and I had to run. And then morning when I came out, you could see the landscape changed with the <coughs> greasy images. And uh, these automobiles. So I started, it remained in my mind and started painting them on handmade paper. For long I have been doing this and I thought Gandhi should visit Kashmir who had seen the light in 47, the peace exists here. Now I brought him as welder to weld the shrapnels. So that was, I was using, I built this chamber uh, so that the chaos I also put these football players. I remember when we were young, we, we used to see these football uh, games. We would see the same energy football players as, as the stone thrower has. With the same romanticism, with, like that energy would be the same. It is. Uh, so I, I, I did these. Also, presently this fractured carpets because I'm again bringing these healing wounds with same shrapnel images I am painting with some history of Kashmir and images of different with the same traditional crafts. Some of these are here. These are. So I bring back the story of what I painted earlier, the exiles, that I bring this and weaving it with traditional crafts and other things. This is how. <coughs> the shrapnel finally I put it into this form. So I think my time is over. And okay.
I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Well, friends, we have gone through five accounts of how arts have addressed, coped with violence. Now there's some time, not too much, but still some time, if there are any questions to be asked. No opinions, please. No statements. Just ask a sharply focused question if you have one. If you don't have it, then I'll thank you and you can go away. <laughs> yes, there you are. Well, please. Huh? I tell her, I tell her. Huh? I would uh, uh, address this question mainly to Mr. K. Raina because uh, he is a theatre, a uh, great theatre per person and I have been in theatre for some time. So I would ask him. The question is that why does today's art, especially in cinema, cinematic art, tolerate violence the way it is being? And why is it being tolerated by the audience? I'll take two small examples. One is this uh, uh, film, uh, serial by Tigmanshu Dhulia on the Allahabad University. It was serialized in Sony Live. There were 10 episodes showing the violence. I come from that university, so I know what kind of violence really happens there. He had shown it earlier in Hasil also, but not the kind that he has shown it in this uh, thing. The other is a film called Mirza. And then there have been so many yeah. others. So why? I, my question is, why do the people tolerate this kind of uh, violence, which is not true, which is not true? And second, why should it be, to, uh, is it not making people uh, here to see such gory things and tolerate violence in Kashmir, Manipur and Gaza? That is my question. You have hit nail on the head. <coughs> Hello. See, uh, to be very straight and quick answer to you is that state underlines violence today. When Home Minister of India, Prime Minister of India endorses a film like Kashmir Files. It is a signal you can get away with it. Now, today, there is a film called Animal. And I was once a member of Censor Board. I can't believe how could they not stop it. Quite, how did they allow it? Now it has reached to Parliament. And Parliament, many things reach. It doesn't happen. But I think you have to understand the kind of economic model. It's a very wide question, economic model that goes on. The kind of social messages that comes on the social, you know. It is a big culture which has been endorsed by the power. Don't forget. I can't forget. You are very right. Manipur, Kashmir, who can't pagar his deshko, what we are incapable of handling it. And top of that, underlining it, see this film, it makes money, it makes money. And many other things. I think state is responsible and equally is opposition. I cannot say. I would say in Kashmir, the tragedy was the secular India did not respond the way they had to respond. They missed the bus. They could understand what was happening. If we tell them, they will say, you know, you are subject to and you. But that is where the other party was receiving them beautifully at Jumu. And they got, you know, they they have used it again and again. I think it is statewide. And when it and if it says no violence, nothing, no lynching, you think it will happen? To know, Karsekas will not stop. Those goons will not stop. They will. They, any goon you will see today, he was with this party or that party as a Gerwa. He uses that as a pa passport for his violence. And the color which is supposed to be color of Tyag and whatever. It is state is responsible equally opposition. Yes, any other question? <coughs> oh good Lord. 
Thank you very much. You seem to be so disturbed inside, and I hope you are. Uh, uh, otherwise, our entire attempt to have this evening... No, please, Ash, go ahead. Uh, this is Dr. Narendra Sharma. Uh, I am a bureaucrat, government servant. Uh, uh, don't you think... Anyone can answer. Don't you think India as a culture, as a race, as a civilization, has paid a very heavy price for blindly following the path of Ahinsa, shouldn't the whole text be read in tandem? Ahinsa Parmo Dharma, Dharma Hinsa Tathaya Thank you. What does that mean? What is it? 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 तो पहली बात तो बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है कि अहिंसा सिर्फ कोई इंडियन आइडिया नहीं है और ना कोई सिर्फ एक किसी मजहब से जुड़ा हुआ आइडिया है जैसा मैंने कहा कि अशोक जो थे उन्होंने कलिंग के बाद उन्हें इल्हाम हुआ और उन्होंने वायलेंस को त्याग दिया और फिर उन्होंने हमें सबको पता है कि फिर उन्होंने श्रीलंका के एक अपने बेटे और बेटी को श्रीलंका भेजा और वहां उन्होंने तबलीग करी बुद्धिज्म की लेकिन उनका उनके और भी बेटे थे और एक उनका बहुत प्रचंड बेटा था जिसका नाम था जलू का और उसने जो है वो एक आर्डेंट शैव भक्त था शैवाइट था और उसने कश्मीर में जो जितने भी बौद्ध विहार थे उसको खत्म करने का काम किया तो इसीलिए वायलेंस की उसी तरीके से जो पांड्या किंग्स थे केरल के उन्होंने और बाद में मेरे ख्याल चालुक्य ने भी कुछ हद तक ये किया उन्होंने एक फरमान जारी किया कि जैन जहां दिखे वहीं उनको खत्म कर दिया जाए तो वायलेंस की किसी भी मजहब या किसी भी कल्चर या रेस पहली बात तो रेस आई एम ग्लैड वे नॉट वन रेस हम मुश्तर एक तहजीब है विच इज वंडरफुल और हम हम अलग अलग रंगों में पाए जाते हैं और कोई ऐसा एक्सपेरिमेंट कोई ऐसा आइडिया नहीं है जो इंडिया में आके पनपा नहीं और जिसपे इख्तलाफ भी नहीं हुआ जिसपे डिसेंट नहीं हुई और फिर वहां से वो इवॉल्व नहीं हुआ तो आई थिंक आवर ब्यूटी लाइज इन सम हाउ अंडरस्टैंडिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लव टॉलरेंस फ्रेंडशिप एंड काइंड ऑफ अ यूनिटी डिस्पाइट ऑल द वास्ट डाइवर्सिटी and and I think that idea is a little bit under threat today. And, uh, today you can say it's under threat threat today today you can globally but I think that India has been an example of that so if we want to change the narrative to say that somehow we are victims and that we should now <coughs> reorder our society based on some perceived past injustices and that we have to adopt violence where necessary I think that can be done uh, but then I don't know how far it would take us so that's what i would like to say it would anyone like to add to that or say something you have a question yes yes uh sir kya duniya mein jitne bhi mazahib hain wo apne kattarpan ki wajah se zinda hai ya matlab establish hota gaya hai dekhiye in the context of uh, sufism and islam ek ahle bait ka mazhab tha ek husain ka mazhab tha theek hai aur ek jo hai खलीफाओं का मजहब था तो कौन किसके साथ खड़ा था तब और आज खड़ा है ये हम जानते हैं है ना तो हर चीज में दो टाइप या दो से ज्यादा आवाजें होती हैं तो सिमिलरली एक मसलक जो था एक मजहब था वो जो है पूजा पाठ करने वाले जो जो बड़ा सवर्ण समाज था उनके जो टॉप पे लोग थे जो जो अल्टीमेट अथॉरिटी मानते थे खुद को रिलीजन की व्याख्या पे उनका मजहब था और एक आम लोगों का था तो अब आप ही बताइए कि क्या वो कट्टरपन की वजह से जिंदा है या वो मोहब्बत की और दोस्ती की वजह से जिंदा है ना नो वन ओनली लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन वी कम टू द एंड देयर आर टाइम कंस्ट्रेंट्स एंड यू हैव टू कैश योर अनलेस यू हैव कम इन द योर ओन व्हीकल्स द कैश द मेट्रो और बस और व्हाटएवर सो वी लीव यू एट दैट वी होप यू आर टेरिबली डिस्टर्बड बट यू आर आल्सो intensely moved by how art is witness to it keeps witness to violence in any different ways there will be perhaps very little record left the way we fudge records mm. the way we are interfering with records but the record of the arts 
to contemporary violence would be something that would perhaps civilize us later, humanize us later. As for the time being, it is difficult but not impossible to remain human and firmly against violence. Thank you very much. We are, incidentally, we are publishing a book of poems, Palestinian poets, translated into Hindi. And it will be, the book will be released on 27th of uh, December at 5 o'clock. Yeah. 5 o'clock at Jawahar Bhavan, which is opposite uh, Shastri Bhavan. Shastri Bhavan. I don't know how long Shastri Bhavan is going to last anyway. Uh, so, uh, uh, if you are interested in knowing how it feels to be a Palestinian in these extremely difficult times, do please come over. Thank you very much.